What's up, church fam? We want to thank you so much for joining us on another episode of The Breakdown. This is a space where we talk and have just real practical conversations about the past Sunday's message that Pastor Abe shared with us. My name is Abraham, and I'll be your host this evening. And I've got some special guests joining me here tonight on this episode of The Breakdown. Kat, Krista, Toby, how are you guys? Before we jump into the notes of this uh, uh, message from last Sunday, I want you guys just to quick, give a quick intro, interesting fact about you before we get into the message. Toby, go. Uh, my name is Toby, and uh, I started coming to Heart Rev a year ago. And actually, I think today marks one year that I've been coming here. Come on, man. That's awesome. So cool. All right. Interesting fact. Krista, go. Hi, my name is Krista, and interesting fact, I guess I'll talk about church. I've been going to Heart Rev for five years now. Five years, awesome. Okay, very cool. <laughs> um, my name is Kat. Um, my interesting fact is that I can't live without coffee. That's an interesting fact for me. I think that's most people, but that's my interesting fact. I'm not the same person without <laughs> Kat. What kind of coffee? Um, I love cold brew, but I'm a latte person for sure with oat milk. Oh, no. Okay, okay. And we want to remind you that Home Coffee is now open here at our National City campus. So please stop by and uh, get a good cup of brew from uh, Dave Id, the barista. Yeah, All right. Good. So let's jump into this uh, message uh, from Sunday that Pastor A preached. And he shared a story from 2 Kings. It was a story of uh, Jehu, who was anointed king, to disrupt just kind of the, the culture that was being created by uh, King um, Ahab and his wife uh, Jezebel, and they were both pretty, what we know is uh, pretty bad people, right? And I'm not sure if anybody out there in the chat, you've ever been in an Ahab and, and Jezebel type relationship. Why don't you go ahead and comment, uh, hashtag Jezzy, ha <laughs> hashtag Ahabby, I don't know, just to make it rhyme. But um, we're going to be talking about, um, he also read from 2 Timothy uh, chapter 4, verses 7 through 8. I'm going to read that really quick, and then we'll go into the, the questions for you guys. And it says, um, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for this appearing. Something that was said on Sunday uh, that Pastor Abe said was stop being petty and stop focusing on things that don't matter and put your time and effort into things that have to do with your purpose. And so I don't know if you guys remember this, uh, uh, this race with Michael Phelps and uh, Chad LeClo, but it was a picture that was like going around the internet for a really long time. And like Chad LeClo, like he's picking his head up out of the water, like looking over at Michael Phelps, like as they're racing. And it was such a big deal, like everybody was using it about like focusing and like keeping your eye on what you're committed to. And so with that being said, I wanted to ask you, Kat, like have you ever, how do you keep focused on like what God you feel is your purpose in life? Like what keeps you in your lane? What keeps you like moving forward in your walk with God and not like kind of peeking over, comparing yourself to somebody else? Like what's something that you do to keep you kind of in your lane, as Pastor Abe would say. Yeah, I really like that you use that analogy because it sticks in my brain, like how Michael Phelps was like looking forward the whole yeah. time. And I think that's like the, tr I don't want to say trick because there's no trick. It's yeah. just like going through the motions. No, you have to go through it. Like you have to like deal with it because there are going to be moments when you look into the person to your right and to your left and you're like, I'm not where they are and that yeah. sucks. And I think that analogy especially, like Michael Phelps is looking forward and I think that's like your goal, that's God, that's what God has for you and you're looking forward at, towards that, he, what he has in his hands for you. So like the person that's looking to the side, like it's really easy to get distracted, yeah, like of course, but the one thing that's helped me is just reminding myself that when I look to the side that I can still turn my head forward and keep looking forward. And I know that in the end, like the times that have been easier, the times that I haven't struggled as much, maybe like with my own walk and my own faith, it's been those moments when I've been looking just towards God and what he has for me versus the person next to me who 
I maybe thought I was competing with, but was yeah. actually a person that was supposed to be in my life as a friend or a mentor, as a peer. Yeah. No, that's awesome. And, and the point you shared is, is so cool is that Michael Phelps was looking forward. He wasn't looking to the right. He wasn't, and that was kind of the big joke was like this dude was so worried about who was next to him that he literally lost his rhythm. He lost his focus and he ended up losing like pretty badly <laughs> to a guy that had ended up coming out of retirement. And so anyways, um, so, uh, so Pastor Abe also said this. He said, there's no way you're going to grow in your faith and not engage in a fight. There's no way you're going to grow in your faith and not engage in a fight. And so I want to ask you, Toby, what is a fight you've experienced in your faith and in your walk with God? And after you, I guess, like, sensed victory, like, how did that deepen your walk with God? Because Pastor Abe said that when we get into fights with people we care about, you know, I know for a fact when, when I get in a fight with my wife, you know, and then like there's the mending part of it, like you feel closer, you know, and, and we have kind of a game we play that whoever apologizes first, like gets the blessing in the fight. <laughs> but in, in your like kind of in your life, how have you experienced like a fight where you're like, man, this this now I know I have the victory. And how did that like deepen and, and make you closer to God? Well, there's there's many trials that I have experienced in my lifetime that have uh, increased my faith, but more so lately with the whole COVID situation and me wanting to have this experience of uh, growing as a, as a businessman. Mm -hmm. And me and my brother, uh, Marco, when we started, when we got in together to open up a barbershop, we literally bought it like in March wow. when everything was already happening. Yeah. And then a couple of weeks later, you know, the governor was like, hey, you know, everything has to be shut down as far as barbershops go. So to me, I wasn't really faced about it because I didn't know what was going to come from it. Mm. Uh, but through the, the weeks that proceeded, uh, we weren't cutting hair. We weren't making money. Wow. We didn't even have like a future date to open up. And my th I started like being defeated. I started mm. just thinking to myself like, man, did I really like just jump into this too quickly? Did I not yeah. think of it? Should I have prayed about it a little bit more? Yeah. And God was just telling me like, I didn't bring you this far just to leave you here now. Yeah. Like I didn't, I didn't give this idea to you just so that it can go flat. Mm. So I was like, okay, you know, just kept reading the word, stay consistent, uh, continue to surround myself with, with mentors that yeah. would encourage me. And there was days when I would go in there, you know, when we were painting, doing the floors or whatever. And I didn't feel like being there. Mm. I didn't feel yeah, the yeah, encouragement. Yeah. But when I would see my brother Marco come, and I would see him down, like man, like I don't, I don't see, I don't see the future for this. Yeah. Uh, I don't see an opening for this. Da, da, da. I would be the one that would, like, nah, man, we didn't come this far. Like, keep your faith, brother. Yeah. Like, we're gonna. Th God has rewards for those that work hard. Sure. And right now in this season, where people are just laying down flat, not a yeah. lot of people, but some people were laying down flat. I was encouraging my brother, like, hey, let's continue the faith. Let's mm. let's let's continue to have faith because. The reward is coming after we apply the hard yeah. work. You got to have a vision. You got to have faith. And then you got to put in the work. Yeah. When you start putting in the work, sometimes you don't see the benefits right away. But at the beginning of the year, I had I, I have conversations with God when I pray, you know. And I told him this year, I was like, I just want to plant seeds. Yeah. That's all I want to do. The harvest will come. I just want to plant seeds. Yeah. So with me speaking faith to my brother, mm. I was also encouraging myself with that same faith. Mm. And now that, you know, we're still going through it, but I see a little bit of a prosperity with the businesses. Now to me, it's like whenever something negative happens, I'm like, man, God got me through so much yeah. already. Why am I even tripping about yeah, this? Yeah. So then I just keep going. That's awesome. So cool. Um, so, and, and speaking of in being a, in a fight and, and maybe some of you out there that you're in a fight right now, you, you're just trying to move life forward. If you're a parent, you, you know, school's getting ready to come up and you're trying to figure out how you're going to make all that work with your job. And, and, um, in the process of fighting in the, in the process of like going through life, I, I know I've been there personally where, you know, you get weary, you get tired, you, you doubt, like you said, in, in what you were doing. And um, Pastor Abe has said this many times, that there is a purpose in your pain. There's purpose in your pain. And, and, and we don't really 
know what it is at first. We, don't, we can't figure it out. We don't know how it's going to happen. We don't know how it's going to work out, but it hurts. It, it's real and it hurts. You know, I, I think of the story of Jesus where he hears uh, the story of um, his cousin John the Baptist being beheaded, you know, and the news comes to him and he like feels that pain. He, he carries it as a human and he, the Bible says he gets into a boat. He, he goes off into the distance. The people find him. And then again, he finds himself in his purpose. He feeds the people. He multiplies the, the bread and the fish and continues to carry on into his purpose. And so I wanted to ask you, Krista, how has finding uh, pain in, 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 or how has finding purpose in your pain like shaped your walk with God? That's such a good question. <laughs> Amen to that question. You know, sometimes like we want to avoid pain. A lot of times I've felt in my life like I don't want to be confrontational mm -hmm. and I want to just avoid the pain when I see it coming. But I know there is a purpose in it. And specifically now, I'm sure we can all attest to this, that we've all been going through a certain type of pain. Yeah. Right. And I can speak on behalf of myself that I've been going through pain of, you know, what's next, God? Like in the midst of all this confusion and uncertainty that's going on in our world, for me in my little corner of the world, I'm thinking, God, what is next mm. through all this? Like, what is your purpose for me? I thought I had one mission to go on, but now it's just, now I'm stuck, or at least I feel stuck. Yeah. And so as I was talking to God about that pain, he always brings me back to 2 Corinthians 12, when Paul he has a thorn in his side and he's crying out to God and he's saying, God, please take this away. If you are able, please take this away. And then God responds to Paul and says, pretty much no. And he says, because my grace is sufficient and in your weakness, I am made strong, says the Lord. Mm -hmm. So I always go back to the word of God whenever, especially now more than ever. I mean, the Bible is more prevalent to dive into than ever before yeah. because of what's going on. And so I just keep letting 2 Corinthians 12 and Paul and his story resonate for me because it really builds character. Mm. Because how you respond to the pain, mm. it says a lot about you. And yeah. so God has had to check me throughout this season and let me kind of marinate in the pain or the uncertainty. And I you know, would pray to God, you know, yeah. God, why, why, why? Um, and sometimes he's silent. Sometimes you won't have to get a why because when you keep moving forward in God and when you keep running the race, that why is going to be revealed to you. Mm -hmm. We're not meant to know everything. Yeah. And that's something that God has really had to mend in me is he had yeah. to say, he had to tell me that don't worry about tomorrow because you don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. You're not supposed to know what tomorrow yeah. is going to bring. And I think God does that for a reason. He doesn't let us know what's going to happen because, you know, we're better off not knowing yeah. because he is sovereign. Yeah. He is Lord and he knows what's best for us. So Awesome. Um, so the, the three, um, well, let me ask one more question and then we'll get into the three points Pastor Abe shared. So we said earlier that God had anointed Jehu to disrupt the culture, disrupt the culture that was being created at the time between Ahab and Jezebel. Again, hashtag Jezzy, hashtag, <laughs> hashtag Ahabby for all of you guys out there. Um, come on, tell the truth, shame the devil. We've all been there. If you haven't been there, hopefully you don't go yeah, there, but in, in Jesus' name, you'll be all right. Um, but I want to ask you guys, I want each of you really. So well, let me ask you guys, how, how old are you, Tope? I'm going to be 34 next Monday. Okay. All right. Happy early birthday, 34. You, how old are you, Krista? I'm 26. 26. 28. 28. I'm 32. Okay. So we've got a, different age brackets. Okay. But I would say, I know we're in our 30s, but I would say we're still young. You guys are definitely young. We're still very young, man. <laughs> <laughs> But I want to ask you guys, and maybe you can just give a quick snap of, of, of a thought, but I want to ask you guys, what is something in culture today that you think needs to be disrupted? You know, through the power of God living inside of us, his Holy Spirit. And I'm not talking about to come through and wreck something, but I'm talking about the way Jesus did it. By engaging in the community we live in, having conversation with people who live in those communities, um, 
you know, that type of disruption. You know what I mean? Um, the, the, the story of Jesus sitting at the well, you know, it was something that was against the, the sociological culture of the day. You know, those types of things. Jesus uh, spending most of his time with uh, the drunks and people called him, you're a glutton and you're a drunken. He was spent most of his time with sinners. And, you know, what is something in your thoughts that maybe has somewhat become taboo, maybe in church, you know? Um, you know, it's 2020, you know, we're trying to reach uh, all generations, of course, um, but being the age you guys are, you know, the amount of time that, I don't know if this is your first church, but what are some things that you believe that the church um, needs to be disrupting right now, like in the culture that we live in? And I'll just throw that out there, and if anybody wants to chime in. From my point of view, the thing that does need to be disruptive is the yes men. Because there's a lot of people that are um, big on being on social media and saying, oh, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And hey, guys, do this and hey, guys, do that. Because I'm taking a selfie and I'm in front of like <laughs> this one place where like I'm doing this one thing. And then they put the phone down and it's like, you ain't doing what you just said, you know. And yeah, can we get a fact check on that? Yeah, like, you know, Instagram's doing the fact check. <laughs> and, I, and I think that... Um, it has to do with the culture trying to be cool and um, just really trying to, it's, it's a follower era, you know, like the more followers you have, like the cooler you are, but that's not what the community needs, you know. You know, if you look at racism, right, it, it's a hard issue. It's not a color issue, it's a hard issue because you should love your brother and no matter what color you are, oh, I don't see color. No, I see color. Yeah. I, know, I know what race you are and I still love you regardless. Yeah. And I don't care what you look like, I'm going to serve you. Why? Because my Lord and Savior serves. Yeah. And, and if I'm trying to be more like anyone, I'm trying to be more like Jesus. So, I mean, I'm big on social media as far as using it. I love it. I think that you can influence um, the word of God into people uh, slowly but surely. He just wants us to plant seeds, not more so, hey, do this and do that. But just yeah. out of uh, living your everyday life. And not just talking about it, not just saying you're going to do something, but actually being out there in, in your community, not even in your community, like just overall, but like with your family, yeah. you know, like show love to your family, raise your kids. They are going to be the next generation. Mm. And we are a church that really focuses into the next generation. So I think that to answer your question, it would be, it, it'll start with stop being a yes man. Yeah. Like it's cool. You're going to say that. And it's cool that you're about it. Now let's put in the work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll jump into the social media thing, but I like it's like on top of that, like from my generation, I think in this next generation, it's cancel culture. Mm -hmm. Like I think it's a really big deal, like especially because like if you go on Twitter, somebody's getting canceled every <laughs> day, and I think that's something that as the church we need to disrupt because like, like in the Bible, the parable says when they asked Jesus like why do you go with the sinners, he's like well like. Do you go to the hospital when you're sick or when you're good? Mm, and yeah. you go when they're sick. And that's the same thing. Like, people who are canceled, that's, that's, that's just not a word that, like, I think us as Christians or as followers of Jesus should say because we believe in giving your life to him and getting reborn. We believe in just learning from your mistakes and growing and becoming a different person because I know I'm not the same person I was when I was 18 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm very different. I'm very different yeah. than I when I was when I was 25. Like, it's just like, I've been constantly growing and changing. And when we cancel someone for something that they did when they were 17, 18, or maybe something they did last year, when we know yeah. that Jesus is constantly healing and forgiving and making people better, I think that's something as the church that we should just, like, disrupt. Yeah, I love that. No, that's awesome. I, I think when we narrow down the space for people to grow, we narrow down the possibilities of them being able to develop in God. And when we say, you know, this is this is the amount of space you have to grow. And you know what I mean? If, if don't go outside the lines, you know what I mean? Like stay within the lines. And then, like you said, people get canceled and people then get that experience of church and, 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 and saying, you know what? That's why I didn't want to come here to begin with. So yeah, yeah, beautiful. Any... So I was going to mention, I've just noticed within the church and outside of the church, especially okay. in today's, like, among youth our age, there's a lot of competition, mm. the spirit of competition. And now there's nothing 
inherently wrong about sure. competition. Yeah, it can help yeah. one another grow. You know, we can sharpen each other like iron sharpen iron. But I feel as though, and I am a testimony to this, I, I can fully admit that I have competed against other people and it it turns and manifests into bitterness, mm. jealousy, inadequacy. Yeah. And then suddenly I'm just forgetting who I'm called to be. And yeah. suddenly I'm so focused on comparing about what I don't have that suddenly I just forget what God has spoken over me. Sure. Like I forget the promises of God over my own life because I'm just competing to be better in something, mm. whether it be academically or in my career. It's like just this unhealthy spirit of competition that kind of manifests itself into something negative when I feel as though we are all a part of the body and God has made us all unique. Yeah. You know, some people serve as the hands, some people serve as the mouthpiece, yeah. people that worship, people that usher, you know, and I've seen it in, if we're talking about ministry, like we all have something to contribute to the body of Christ. Sure. We all have something that can help spread the gospel that Jesus comes to save yeah. and that he loves us. And if we spend so much time competing and comparing, we miss the whole point of what we're doing. Wow. Right? Yeah. So that's something that I've noticed. Awesome. Such good answers. So let's, let's, let's talk about those three points. So it was rise above your company, rise above compromise, and rise above cowardice. And so now that we've kind of broken apart a little bit of, of um, just the fighting thought, you know what I mean? Just the, the thought of staying focused, you know what I mean? And, and now we're going to kind of get into these points a little bit. And so um, in the first point, it was rise above your company. And Pastor Abe said that passive Christians are contagious. And he also mentioned the scripture of how bad company corrupts good character. I see Kat, she's mm-hmm, so maybe she's, she's, she's either been the bad company or maybe she's had the bad company. No, good company. <laughs> so what's funny, though, is maybe, maybe God knew what he was doing because I was actually going to ask you. If, if you've ever, if, if God has ever directed you to maybe separate from passive Christians, you know, or even maybe it was toxic people, you know, toxic relationships, um, you know, that was separating you from your walk with him and, and like, how did you go on, you know, about, because we hear often like toxic people, you know, you don't need them in your life. You know what I mean? You don't need a hashtag Jesse. Yeah. You don't need a hashtag Ahabby, whatever it is. Whatever that thing is, you know, have you ever been there? And like, how did you go about doing that? Yes, I've been there. Um, I actually grew up in this church. So I got to okay. when I was 14. So all of my major key friendships outside of like high school and stuff yeah. like that have been here. And and I think like one of the things that we talked about is like passive Christians. Mm. Like it's one thing Pastor Abe had mentioned. And when you grow up like in Christianity, in a church or in different churches or whatever, you kind of just go with the crowd you're going with. Yeah, and yeah, you, yeah. you're at the same level as them. So like you keep, if, if they're serving, you're serving with them kind of maybe. Yeah. Or if they're not serving, if they're doing something outside of church that they maybe shouldn't be doing, you're also doing it. And I think the moment that I realized that, and I, I'm not saying toxic people don't have to be cut out of your life completely unless it's necessary. Mm. I think like we need to remember that we're still Christians and we still have to love people. Sure. So like, we're not saying like, no, you can't be in my life forever. You're blocked on Instagram, Facebook, everything, unless it's, I mean, there are instances that are yeah. necessary, but I mean, like there were moments when you look at them and you say, hmm. Like, I'm sitting here and I'm trying to fit in with you. When yeah. I know that God has been like, mm, you know, you're not being yourself. You're sure. not being the person you want to be. When I would say yes to something, they would be like, no, that's not cool. Don't do that. Like, yeah. that's not what's going to make you cool. That's not what's going to work. Yeah. And I think for me, it had to be like, mm, I don't care if it makes me cool. Because, it, because, like, it fulfills my heart and my soul and what God has for me. And it's like that feeling that you're like, Maybe these people are just meant to be a season in my life where I grow and I learn from it and then I move forward. And those seasons are hard. <laughs> they're yeah. not easy. Like when you have toxic friends, they're your friends for a reason. You love sure. them. You care about them. But there are moments in your life when you need to look like, like I'm going to go back to the analogy from the beginning. Like you're looking to the side. You got to yeah. look forward and just like stand up and be like, all right, okay. 
I want to be the best me, and I want to be the best for God, and I want to be the best for the people in my life, and that means just keep moving forward, and unfortunately, like, I gotta leave you behind, but you grow, and you learn, and then you look back at it in 10 years, especially for our youth, like, trust me, Yeah. 10 years from now, (laughs) it's it's gonna be so different, so better, (laughs) you're gonna look at things, and it's just gonna, it's gonna change, and those people that were there may not be there, and that's okay. Yeah. And I think a great way to rise above your company is in the story of Jehu, you know, he had to rise above his brothers. It was his family, you know, and we could put that context into friends and and all of these types of things. But I think also another great way to rise above companies is to separate your or to surround yourself with good company. And so Leviticus um, says that we should rise in the presence of the aged. And I love about our church is that it's, it's not only is it multi, multi-ethnical, but it's all, also multi-generational. So I wanna ask you guys, being 20, 30 year olds, do you find it easy to connect to older people? And we'll, I, what I'm getting at is, I think surrounding yourself with good company helps you rise above it. But when you have somebody that's older, that's, that's lived life a little bit more than you, who's also a Christian, can like speak into your life, give you some direction, give you some guidance, um, and I, I feel like sometimes, uh, in, in, and I've seen this in the church, that younger people, young adults, you know, young professionals, they are like, they don't want to be around the older crowd. Like, they don't know how to relate to them. You know what I mean? They don't know how to connect with them. And so I just want to ask you guys, do you guys find it easy? Do you find it, Christo, do, do you, how, how do you feel about that? Yeah, so I do have an older leader in the church that I go to, my life group leader. So cool. Yeah, so, and I think that's very important because for me, I have friends that aren't Christian. You know, the Bible tells us to let your light shine before others. So I feel that we can't just shine amongst ourselves. It's just a bunch of lights in the room. (laughs) So that's why I have friends that maybe do not know God so that they can see me mm. and trust me oh my gosh they ask a lot of questions <laughs> tell me let me tell you you don't as a christian you don't even have to say you're christian they just yeah they just ask questions right. and they know and sure. they see it and so that's why for me it's so important to have a leader in the church because they ask me these questions and i'm like oh my gosh you know <laughs> i try to answer them to the best of my abilities to whatever god speaks yeah. to me in the moment but it's just so important to have Someone who's older, like you said, wiser, who has been around and knows how to respond. Mm. And because it's, it's so important, too, because the Word of God says in Romans to not be conformed mm. by the patterns of this world, but to be transformed by the renewal of your minds every yeah. day. And so that's another reason why it's so important to connect to the older generation because sure. I'm, I'm only 26, <laughs> There's so much I don't know. Yeah. So that's why I, it's so important to connect with people that are wiser, who have been mm. around longer, and they just, they've been through the same things that I've been, and they can yeah. impart their wisdom to me. It's very important. I'll throw that quick question to you. Yeah, I mean, uh, to me, every time I think of something like that, I always think of myself as being a, a big brother and a little brother at the same time, but also being... Uh, willing to accept wisdom, you know, because mm. it, it, it tells you in the Bible, in, in Proverbs, I'm not sure exactly what it says, but it's it's good to receive counsel. Sure. You know, so for me, I don't find it difficult to be able to speak to people that are older than me or younger than me. So I'm a teacher, and I teach kids that are 12 years old. Mm. And I also have colleagues that I look up to that are 50 years old. And my life group leader, he's uh, six, seven years older than me. And I love being around him. I don't really ask a lot of questions. Who's your I'm life more of leader? like a visual learner. Moses, shout out to Moses, shout by the way. Shout out Happy to Moses. Birthday, <laughs> August 3rd. Um, I don't really like to ask a lot of questions. I'm more of a learner by, by, by seeing. Yeah. And just the way he treats his family, man. Um, I'm not married yet. Yeah. Uh, hope to be one day. Come on. But um, just the way that he treats his family, he treats his wife, treats yeah. his kids, treats his sister. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, like, yo, like, I want that. You know, and I and it's good for me to be able to see that. Yeah. But then also too, like I said, next week is my birthday. I'm about to be 34. I remember when I was 24. Mm. I remember who I was hanging with when I was 24. I remember what I was doing when I was 24. <laughs> and it's because of the people that I was hanging out with. You yeah. know. And, and when I was surrounding myself with those people, and yeah, we were like-minded, 
but we were clubbing, we were drinking, we were smoking, mm. we were doing whatever we wanted to, but it's because we were like-minded. Yeah, yeah, and I yeah. didn't realize that I wasn't really in a circle, I was more of inside of a cage. Yeah. And so I started reading the word, and the word really brought it into me, like, like what you're doing is not right, and this is what you should be doing. Mm. So when I started opening up my eyes, I like what you said earlier, where um, sometimes you shouldn't leave them behind. Sometimes you could just be that example for them. And it's good to have friends that are not Christians. Because the best example that I ever got was, if you ever try to teach somebody the word, don't use words. Hmm. Just lead by example. Yeah. And that's the biggest thing that I try to do on my everyday life. I don't try to tell my homies, hey, I'm a Christian, dog. You should come to church with me. <laughs> like, nah, man. Like, you're going to come up to me and ask me one day, like, yo, Toby, why are you always in a good mood? Why are you always yeah. trying to help people? Yeah. Why this and why that? Well, come to church and find yeah, out, brother. Yeah, yeah. Or come to my house, just read the word. You know, I always try to slide yeah, it in. Yeah, yeah, there you but, go. But I'm always willing. And I think that based on my willingness yeah. to receive counsel, mm. I'm getting fed so much wisdom that I might as well just pour it out yeah. to somebody else. Yeah, yeah. Love that. So, so point number two on Sunday was rise above compromise. And so uh, in the scripture on Sunday, it says that King um, Joram sent a messenger to Jehu and basically approached him and was like, hey, we want to know if you come in peace. And uh, Jehu basically told that dude, like, man, fall back in line, like, get out of my way. So then they had to go report to King Joram and was like, hey, he took the first messenger. What should we do? He sends a second one. He's like, the king wants to know, do you come in peace? He's like, man, you get out of my way too. Like, get behind me, right? He says, fall in line. And so I think as Christians, it's impossible for us not to, I think, at some point compromise. We know that until we get to heaven, sin is, is within us. It's going to live with us. It's going to remain in us. And I think a, a lot of times I, I feel like, and, and I've seen this, that Christians give up because they just can't get over the fact that they have compromised. And so I want to ask you guys, how has grace shaped your walk with God when you have compromised. You know what I mean? I think a way to rise above compromise is to be able to say, look, I, 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 I'm not what I've done and I am who God has called me to be. And, you know, let me stop masking all of these different times I've compromised with different stuff, you know, and continue to compromise. And, and whenever I think about that, I think of my son is, you know, he's got really bad eczema. And, and so they started giving him all these different stuff to like, you know, kind of patch up his body and none of it would work. None of it would work until finally they figured out the best thing that was for him to heal his skin. And now like he looks completely different. And I'm like, man, that, it just reminds me of grace. Like you, you once you put on grace, it just covers you. It's not, it's not a, 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 a to say that you're not gonna compromise, but I believe that is something that empowers you to rise above it when you do compromise. And so I'm gonna ask you guys, like how has grace kind of shaped those moments where you've compromised and, and you've kind of felt like, oh, I've gone too far. Like, what does that mean to you when you hear about grace? Well, to me, when I think of grace, um, not only do I think of grace for other people, but grace for myself. Yeah. Um, grace to not be so judgmental on myself and to carry myself and to carry my burden, so to say. You know, I am a child of God. And yeah, I did sin, or I do sin, you know. But God has grace on me. So therefore, I should love myself too. Yeah. And because I love myself, I'm not going to compromise yeah. on a relationship, on a business, on a goal that I have. Oh, this is good enough for me. Like, no, man. Like, the Bible says you're beautifully and wonderfully made. Yeah. And you should go for all of your dreams. For me, when I think of goal setting, I think of 1 Corinthians 3 like the end of 22 and the beginning of 23. And it says, where everything belongs to you and you belong to Jesus and Jesus belongs to God, mm. right? So when I think of everything, I'm a human and I'm a part of this world. So I think of everything from this world. But when I think of Jesus, everything, I think of my salvation, yeah. right? And when I think everything, me, Jesus, and then God, I think of it in alignment, mm. right? So where it's God, Jesus, me, and then there's everything. Yeah. If I take myself out of that alignment and I'm, not lo I'm, no, I'm no longer following Christ or God, I'm removed from that everything. Mm. You know what I mean? 
So I have to make sure that I'm in that. And the way that I'm in that is to understand that God has grace for me. So then I have grace for myself. And that allows me to chase the everything mm. that I'm going for. Really quick, if you guys. Yeah. So being able to rise above compromise, you first have to be honest with yourself mm. and recognize that you've compromised in the first yeah. place. Right? So rising above compromise. So, so something that I have done to overcome just compromise is to be bold mm. in my faith yeah. and be bolder in who I am so that the next time if something arises, because when I heard this message and he talked about rising above compromise, it just made me think of faith, faith-based, like because of me and I know some people may have experienced it. Sometimes we compromise talking about our faith, yeah. especially amongst non-Christian friends because we're afraid of making them uncomfortable mm. or we're afraid of just causing tension or mm. we're, we're just afraid that it's not going to work out right. So for me, I would just encourage, and I encourage myself every day in this, to just be bold in the faith, read the word every day, understand it, and actually live it out yeah. so that when compromise comes, because there's been situations where I've compromised and grace is sufficient, but it's also convicted me. Yeah. Right? Like God has stopped me in my place and told me, oh, you, you compromised on that. Yeah. You could have spoken more about the word. Mm. And so that's where grace comes into play for me is that I'll feel the grace, but then I'll also feel the conviction. Mm. But it's good because God convicts those that he yeah, loves because sure. he knows that we're meant to do more and do greater things and help people. Yeah. So that's just how I see it is mm. to be bold in the faith so that you can rise above having yeah. to compromise. Awesome. Amen. Really quick. Yeah, I think um, we have to, it's like that when you talked about grace, I, it just reminds me more and more that we're human. We strive to be Christ-like, but that doesn't mean we're like Jesus. Like, we're not perfect. And I think, like, when we fall or when we, we compromise and we're like, oh, man, I shouldn't have done that. And he reminds us, like, it's okay. I still have you. Like, you can get back up and you can do it better next time. And I think that it all ties together with, like, having leaders that are older or friends that are older to connect with because I think at least in my generation I've compromised a lot like I'm always like oh it's okay never mind I'll, I'll figure it out or something like that and not only in my faith or my walk at work or in different things with relationships and I think I've learned to rise above it through the relationships that I've had with older leaders and older people because they've taught me like hey cat like uh, sometimes I'll tell them I'm like oh never mind it's okay I'm sorry I bothered you and they're like stop like yeah. it's fine like don't mm. compromise like if it doesn't work for you it doesn't work and I'm like you're right yeah. I shouldn't mm. I'll learn that and I'll just pray about it and learn to be better and grow like we're human yeah, yeah. we'll get better yeah awesome the third and final point on Sunday was was rise above cowardice or another way would be to say it is rise above inaction and so we wanna to talk to all of you that are watching and viewing online. We hope tonight has encouraged you, has just empowered you to move forward in your faith. If you're feeling inactive, you're feeling inadequate, we wanna let you know that the Spirit of God is ready and, and He's desiring to move you forward in your walk with God. So rise above your company, rise above compromise, rise above cowardice. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of The Breakdown with us that airs every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. We also wanna invite you to tune in to Church at Home at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. in English, 1 p.m. in Spanish. We also have Church Outside in here uh, at our San Diego campus, at our um, parking lot right out front. We hope you'll join us. We love you. Thank you for tuning in. God bless.